Today we're making a money pouch using book pages for the pockets. There are no special tools or supplies required, so it's really cheap and easy to make. I've come up with a new method for making these, which means you can make them in any size you like. These four I created for US dollar bills, but you can flex them and I'll show you how to suit the currency that you want. I've added a few compartments inside each one. So in this one, I've actually added five. You can add as many or as few compartments as you like. On this one, I think I just added three. These interior pockets are made from book pages. So I used thin paper from this large Spanish dictionary. And the exteriors are decorated with paper, not cardstock. Although I have added cardstock to the front and back just to give it that beautiful luxury feel. I use really pretty papers. This one is vintage and this one is actually waxed paper with a gorgeous gold fleck. I've got the process steps for you today as usual and of course these will be in Pinterest. Let's make a money pouch from book pages, cheap and easy. So gather your supplies around you. I have the dictionary page that I mentioned and this is quite thin paper and it's a large dictionary. So thin paper is great for the pockets because you're going to do some folding and you don't want too much bulk or thickness in the money pouch if you add a few compartments. You'll need a little closure so I just use some handmade ones punched out of cardstock that have decorated. I've got a pretty brass brad a glue stick, so preferably a glue stick rather than liquid glue. I have my bone folder ready, we will need that. We're going to make all of these pockets beautifully crisp. A needle for making a hole for the closure, a pencil and a pair of scissors. And at the back I've just pulled out a very pretty, well actually a little collection of papers. A ruler, there's a tiny bit of measuring, really not much today. I've got some little bits of scrap, it's fun when we collage on the inside of the money pouch and that gives it a bit more thickness which adds to that luxury feel. And this is the pile of papers, this is my ironing pile. This is the pile of papers I've added wax to which I think I will be making more of these pouches and using the wax because it works really really well. If you want to see a video on how I do that I do have one on my channel. So these are the supplies, let's get folding and first of all what we need to do is make some of the pockets with that dictionary. So the first thing we want to do is make a number of these little pockets. I made quite a few the other night. They're really quick and easy and I think if you batch make them that really does speed things up. Decide how big you want your money pouch to be. So obviously if you want it to fit your notes in that will tell you how big it needs to be. I'm working for US dollar bills so this width here is seven inches and I've worked to a height of this front of three and that means that I need to take my lightweight dictionary page, it doesn't need to be a dictionary but lightweight paper is good and I need to turn it to the landscape position so horizontally because I need to do some special folds to be able to get a pocket this shape. So take your paper and first of all fold it up. Fold it up, fold it neatly and make a good crease which is why I've got my bone folder ready. So we're folding it in half, fold it up, make a nice crease and I need to reduce the width of this to be my seven inches. So what I'm going to do is just turn that over there I'll make a little bit of a crease at the corner here. I'm not going to fold all the way across. And then I'm going to take my ruler and do a tiny bit of measuring. There isn't much to do today. Obviously, if I want seven inches across here, half of that is three and a half. So I'm going to measure from the crease three and a half inches and make a little bit of a mark. And where I've made the mark, I'm going to, holding it all neatly in place, just make a crease by folding over the end and what I've done is basically give myself a fold 
so that the width of this will be the seven inches. So I also want the height to be a bit less than the page that I've already got. And I want that height to be my three inch mark, which happens to be just where the text finishes. I don't even need to make a mark on this one. So I'm literally going to fold the top over so that this is as high as I want my little pocket to be. So not difficult so far. Let's make that into a nice crease. And that's actually the folding done. Let's open it up and we need to just make a little bit of a V-shaped cut here and here, which is at the crease as far as that vertical line goes. Let me get the scissors. So I'm going to take a little bit of a V-shape out. You're not going to see it, so don't worry if it's not beautifully neat. And it just needs to be a small sliver and what that's going to do is help the folding be flush and neat and easy when we come to glue it together and fold it all up. So that's the V-cut done. And I'm also going to take or mitre the corners here and here along this bottom row. I'm going to talk about this bottom flap and we'll work on that first. So where you've got a little rectangle from your creases, just take the corner off. Same on the other side. Just take the corner off like that. And that's really the basics of the folding and the cutting done. There's a tiny bit more cutting to do. Let's bring it together then. And to do that, what we need to do is fold in these lower flaps. So working on this lower half, let's just recrease to make make life really easy. What I find with these really thin papers is it's easy for the crease to just become a bit misaligned. So let's just take a moment to recrease and then I need my glue stick. There we go. Oh, it's a new one. It's always nice, isn't it? We need to glue these flaps into place down here. Same on the other side. I quite like this Uhu stick for this. It's not wet, but it is quite sticky and it, because it's big, it's faster to work with than some of those small sticks. Let's glue that one down and glue that one down. And we're going to take a little bit off the corners down here. This is just to stop naughty bits either getting in the way of folds or the other trims I do of stopping the extra bits of paper just peeping up above the pocket in an irritating way. So again, working on this bottom area, I'm just going to fold in and glue that extra excess. We did do a fold earlier. I want this to be glued down now, so I'll just give it a fold again so I've got that crease in the right place. I'll take my glue stick, run some glue down there and fold that up and press it down. So that's our half of the pocket gluing done. What we need to do is take a moment now to do something with this top half to bring it together. So for the top half of this book page to make the pocket, the first thing we need to do is just refold in those side flaps. Fold them in and crease them down again so that we know where they need to go. And take off a little bit of the corner here and the same on the other side. So take your scissors and just nick off a little bit. Same there. Open it up and we're going to just glue down this. I'm not going to cut it off. I'm going to glue it down for extra reinforcement, but not on the horizontal crease. Just angle it a little bit. And what that will do is prevent this sticking out at all, which it can do above the pocket rim at the top, which is just really irritating. So just angle it down a little bit and fold that down. 
turn it back up. And then what we want to do is get rid of this horizontal flap, the excess. So I will glue that down. I'm not cutting anything off. I'm not cutting off anything I don't need to, to give this as much strength as possible. Fold that down. And now what we want to do is put glue on these flaps on the outside and just fold up and bring it together. So glue on the outside. Make sure you get your glue all the way to the edge because that's where it's more likely to come away. So glue all the way to the edge. And I find it easiest if I just sort of hold those down and fold that up. And this is the best way I've found from doing quite a few of getting as flush an edge here without bits poking up and getting these to be as straight as possible. So now we have a pocket. You can sit and make these in front of the TV. You can make a whole batch of them and then it's really quick to put together and make our money pouch with as many of these as you like. So let's do a money pouch like this Christmas one with three pockets. And I think this would be a really great idea for putting a little bit of money in as a present at Christmas, or you could adapt it for birthdays with different paper. So I need three of these and I just need to glue them together so that they stretch out like this and do that magical pull. So I've got two more here. Let's take two more from my pile. They're all the same size. And the first thing I'm going to do is just remind myself where that little, ooh, little bit, where that little fold was. Remember we made a tiny crease and I'm going to use that to tell me where to put a vertical line of glue. So I want a line of glue up there, quite wide, don't make it too narrow. And I'm going to go all the way across the bottom edge with my glue. And I simply take another of my pockets it really doesn't matter which way just make sure you've got the opening at the top that would be a bit of a faux pas if we put it at the bottom and put that on top and glue it together so glue down the middle of course along the bottom and I'm going to do the same again so I can see where that fold was and yeah there glue down the middle if you want, make a mark where that fold is. You won't be able to see it when you've glued these together. Down horizontally. And it does work with five compartments because the paper's really thin and we've squished them down and made the creases really beautiful. So that goes on the top of there. And to make this really robust, and I do think this makes quite a difference to that, that luxury feel, is I'm going to add some cardstock front and back. Again you won't see the cardstock so it doesn't matter what's on it. I've just cut a couple of pieces that will fit on each side. It's not even exactly the right size so it doesn't fill the whole thing. It's going to just add a little bit of strength so I need some glue on that and again I want to make sure there's glue all the way to the sides. So do your job, ooh-hoo. Which glue do you use? So if you had a project like this, I'm guessing you'd use a glue stick, would you? What would you use? Leave me a comment down below so we can all see what we would, you, we would use for projects with relatively thin paper. Second piece, so we're doing it front and back. I'll get this on. Like that. So you don't need special cardstock, you don't need fancy cardstock to make the cover because the robustness has been built in to the front and back and which means we can use pretty papers and also I'm going to add a bit of collage to the interior of the flap and that's just really beautiful when you open it up and it adds a bit more thickness. So that gives us a three pocket, oops, three pocket accordion pouch. So what I will do now is add a wrap around cover just with some pretty papers. Choose a nice piece of paper for your wrap around cover. So these that I've added wax to I think are tremendous. You get that beautiful vintage feel 
and it's quite thick too. I think actually I started with thicker paper with this. So as I say, I did a few. That's just regular copy paper that I've added wax to. Maybe we should have a go with that one. You can use scrapbook paper. You could use paper that you've decorated yourself. Papers in a vintage style, I think, are particularly good. There's that sense of money about it. Oh, that's another one from my recent activities. I don't think vellum would work, but any of these, because I don't really mind if the image isn't upright either. So the first thing we want to do is take our paper and glue it to what will be the front of our pocket. So again, making sure you've got your openings upright. Let's not get this upside down. And I'm going to put some glue on the front here and literally wrap it around and then bring the flap over so to get this to be as large as I want. So I'll get a fair amount of glue on here. So glue all over. And of course the paper that I've got is wider at the moment than my money pouch. So I need to decide which images I'm going to keep and preserve. I think I might. I think I'll keep the, no, I'm going to forego the butterfly. I'm going to have to trim a bit off. Just put that on. Try and be as neat as possible, butt it up to the edge and don't go beyond. So I will be trimming off here. That will be my front. Then turn your pouch pocket over. That's the best way to do it. And just nudge this around it like that. It's looking beautiful already. Try to get it as straight as possible so that you you're not seeing the pouches inside. There we are. It feels gorgeous actually. I really like the feel of the wax on it. And then bring it over again and I want to make my flap whatever size is appropriate to bring it down to here. So I'm going to fold this top flap over but I'm going to leave just a little bit of space here in case any of my notes uh, either stick out or let's be positive and say there's going to be lots of notes in there. So just fold that over so that you have a little bit of extra space here, maybe half a centimetre, three or four millimetres, something like that. And fold that down. In fact, I'm going to go in with my bone folder now, so I've made a decision where that crease will be. And now I've clearly got too big a flap at the front here, so I'm going to take some of that off. And for something like this, I think I want my flap to come to about two centimetres short of the bottom. So I'm going to do a fold back so that that will be in about the right place maybe to about there you can measure it if you want to so my flap's going to come down to here and I'll add a closure and I've still got too much but I'm not going to tear here I'm going to fold again just take a little bit of this excess off so that when I come to decorate on the inside here I've still got just a bit to fold over and that means I haven't got a raw edge. This is going to add more protection and quality feel to our project. So fold that down and I can at this stage I could either cut it or just tear that off. So I'll show you what we've got. We've got the front flap ready to be trimmed to look a bit more like an envelope actually that's going to come over there and that will fold down and we'll put the closure here. So what I need to do now is just take a little bit off here. And what I'm going to do, the sizes I like, are to come down about two centimetres. So I'll make a little mark. Hard to, hard to make a mark. I could do it on the other side, I suppose. Two centimetres there and two centimetres in. And the same on the other side, two centimetres down, two centimetres in, scissors and cut. 
I'm not going to guess because having done all this work I don't want it to look tatty or wrong. There we go. And now and again I get things wrong and rather than hide that I'm just going to show you what I've done. I've not trimmed it off at the side before I've cut this angle here so let me just sh let me just do that and then trim that back down. I'm just going to fold these back so I can see them all. Were you shouting at me and I wasn't listening? I'm just going to trim this excess off at the side and I'm doing that with a pair of scissors and I'll go back into that front piece. It's not difficult, it was just a bit deft of me. Yeah, I'll just go back in and do that measuring again to make my flap on the front. I knew it looked a bit weird, it was too big. Remove that. And now we can go into, that looks so much better proportionally. Let's go into just filling in on the inside. And I think because this is such a patterned paper, I'm just going to go with some of my dyed papers. So these were the papers I put through the mill a while ago I did some dunking in oh it's so much fun at my desk a lot of dunking can't beat a bit of dunking and I added some I think I added mica to the water it was acrylic in the water and we made a lovely mix and I did a whole batch I got some gorgeous effects I was surprised myself what came out so I have that on there We'll trim it to size in a second, but this just adds a bit of something extra and we might do a bit of label adding in a second. Make sure it's well down. It sticks to the wax, if you have a question, it is sticking to the waxy paper. And I'll get this down too. So glue on that top flap, bring that down, and then I'll just turn it over and trim off the excess here, like that, Let's go round. So you could add any other bits of scrap paper on that internal flap. If you've got a plain exterior, maybe go for some pattern collage paper. It doesn't need to be so neat. And what we're going to do now is add glue on this card and fold it up so you won't see this edge here. So glue all the way along here on my cardstock and fold that up. Oh, there's a little bit needed there. Fold that up like that. Wonderful! So maybe what we need to do is just reintroduce the crease and I'm going to add a few extra bits of decoration to that internal flap but you can see we really are making progress. So I like to add just a tiny bit of decoration to the inside. I've used washi tape and some labels, what have we done on the others? Yeah same again just anything that goes with the patterns. Kept it quite simple on that one. So I'll add, I've got a nice bold set of type here so this is a, I think it's called Really Random Labels, nice bold ones from Tracy Fox. Or cut headings out of books or use dictionaries. Large font in children's dictionaries works really well. Maybe a little bit more. But as I say, because there's lots of pattern here, I think I'll just keep this simple. I just want a bit of a surprise when you open the flap. And now what I want to do is add the closure which needs to be in the middle along here. So 18.2 centimetres, 9.1, and I'll go about three millimetres away from the flap edge, which gives it enough space to get under, but also it means you can take out the flap quite easily. Let's make a little bit of a hole in there. And I've got some beautiful brads. I bought this set on Amazon. Relatively small brad, I think, for this. It's gorgeous, isn't it? A lovely little brassy colour. Make a hole in the middle of my little bit of card. It's just cardstock that I've coloured, had some fun colouring. I've added a bit of gold to this. I think it goes well with the gold and green on here. I make videos weekly and many of them have free process steps. So make sure you subscribe 
and come back next week for some more. I hope to see you soon.